November 9th was the birthday of a man by the name of Benjamin Banneker. This is one of several children's books about Banneker. He was born a free black man on November 9th in 1731, and he led a remarkable life. He was largely self-taught. Um, his grandmother helped him to learn to read from her Bible. He taught himself a lot of math and mathematic theories. And then he went on to be one of the people who um, surveyed the original land for our capital city of Washington, D.C. He also uh, created an almanac. He had really uh, an amazing story. But one of the things that Banneker was most famous for was a clock that he made. And when he was a younger man, he asked a neighbor if he could examine his little pocket watch. And so he did, and because the neighbor trusted him, he allowed Banneker to take it. And he took it apart and he examined all of the inner workings of that watch. And he made drawings. And then he decided he wanted to build himself a clock. But of course, the workings of that pocket watch were going to be too small to build a clock that could be, say, set on a mantle. And so he made the calculations of how to make it bigger. And then he had to figure out what material to use. And he decided that he would use wood to make all of the gears and the inner workings of the clock. But as he was making the wood and whittling the pieces, uh, they were breaking. And so he figured out that he had to cure the wood so that it wouldn't break. And eventually he completed this whole clock um, by that was made of wood except for the bell which he purchased. And that clock actually drew people from quite a far distance so they would come and see it and just sort of marvel at the idea that he could have put this whole thing together made of wood, that he could have figured all of the calculations out necessary to make it keep time precisely. He actually had that clock for his entire life. It was accurate. And unfortunately, on the day of his funeral, his house burned down and the clock burned with it. And so it's lost to us, except for what history tells us. And as I was thinking about that story, I was thinking about the fact that of all of the things that human beings are capable of doing, that somebody could figure out how to make a wooden clock, that somebody could figure out how we can land a person on the moon, that somebody could figure out how to make something as heavy as an airplane full of people stay up in the sky, that somebody could figure out how to transplant somebody's heart from another person so that their life could go on. Humans are capable of a lot of things. And yet when we consider God, we realize that we're talking about a whole different category of marvelous. And the psalmist said this in Psalm 8, when I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you take thought of him? and the son of man that you care for him. Yet you have made him a little lower than the angels and you crown him with glory and majesty. You make him to rule over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the heavens and the fish of the sea, whatever passes through the paths of the sea. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. The one who created everything that we see, the one who made and gave humans their brains and the capacity for discovery and invention that we have, chooses to have a relationship with us. And that is a marvelous truth that we can hold on to.